there are times you're going to find yourselves in a desperate moment, forced in a place that you didn't choose to go, and still it's at that point that you realize it's not about you, but it's about the King of Glory that you begin to worship. But what happens when your decisions to obey God and to worship Him, to make that decision to obey Him and worship Him, what happens when it leads to even more trouble, it seems? Ever been there? Like, wait a minute, God, I feel like you told me to do this. I felt like you led me here. I felt like you asked me to do this. And now it seems like things are worse. Luke chapter 2, verse 5 through 7. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Verse 6, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Now, the odd order of this verse is like, they, oh, she had a child. Oh, and by the way, they were in a guest room. They didn't have a guest room, so they were in a stable. It's like there's this odd order that causes us, I think, to overlook the troubling story that's just taken place that anybody with a pregnant wife would understand is ridiculous. Like, they just traveled miles at the worst time to be traveling for a pregnant person on a donkey, on foot, And you get to this place that you know God led you to go, and there's no place for your wife to give birth except a stable. I I thought you told me to marry her, God. Like, this is your son that's about to be birthed, and it's going to go down in a stable? Can you imagine, just think about this, any husband in here, can you imagine the embarrassment Hey, baby, this is the best we got. The shame. Like we've created this idyllic picture of, of, with our nativity scenes. And don't let anybody go through home and throw your nativity scenes away. That's not what I'm saying. I love them. We got them all over our house. But it's like, oh, this is so beautiful and peaceful and serene, quiet and calm and normal. It's not normal. They ended up in a stable out of desperation. There was nowhere else to go. I know how frantic I was when we had our first child, and I can't imagine taking a few detours on my way down to MCG or University or St. Joseph or wherever we had our child, and then saying, well, let's just stop off at the local barn. I feel like that's what God's saying to do. My wife would have told me no. The best Joseph could do for Mary and the Messiah was a stable full of real and ritual uncleanness. This was not a sterile environment for sure. And maybe God had some mysterious purpose in this humiliation, Joseph must have thought. We now know that he did. The great, grand humiliation, the grand condescension of God coming to earth as a baby. But Joseph didn't know all of the details at that point. He was desperate, so he ended up in a stable. But how many of you know that some of the most powerful times of worship in your life comes in the places of your greatest desperation in your life? I am desperate for you, God, and I got nowhere else to go, but I go, I know this, I'm going to worship you in the middle of this stable as we're giving birth to our first child. There are times when seeking and following God faithfully, you're going to find yourselves in a desperate moment, forced in a place that you didn't choose to go and didn't want to go, and still it's at that point that you realize it's not about you, but it's about the King of glory that you begin to worship. You see, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you've received from God? This isn't about your exercise regimen. This isn't about the food that you eat. This is about the worship that you give to God. The temple is the place of worship. Do you not know that your body is the place of worship of the Holy Spirit who's in you, who you received from God? You're not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Worship God with your life. See, our lives and our circumstances are about Jesus Christ. The Father has purposes for us and even our hardships that extend far beyond us. And often what appears like misfortunes in the moment will prove to be means of God's great mercy for us. 
It's in your place of desperation that you can still worship God. Why? Because you remember that worship is first and foremost a decision. What is it a decision to do? It's a decision to worship God in the desperation of life. Can I encourage you, church? I don't care what situation that you might be in today, how desperate it is, God is still worthy of your worship in the desperation of your life. As a matter of fact, it's the only thing that will help you get out of that desperation in your life is to continue to fix your eyes on the author and the perfecter of your faith, the king of glory that we sang about this morning and worship him in the middle of the mess. See, the father is at work. And it may be that what you need most is not less turmoil, but more trust in the God that is with you. It could be that your desperation and you begin to worship God leads to a greater devotion to the one who sees you exactly where you are, who hasn't lost you and has you in his hands still. See, worship is a decision to be obedient. Obedience calls us to worship in the desperate places of our lives and then watch what our sovereign God will do.